Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So first off, a huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring this video today. So make sure you stick around. So later on, I'm gonna show you how I made a fun seed container using my new Cricut machine. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how we transformed an outdoor space into a serene garden of our dreams. So make sure you stick around. It's gonna be a fun video. Okay guys, so this is what we started with and this is our side yard. It's not really like a main backyard. This is just kind of on the side of our house. It is a nice size, however, it kind of just gets neglected and we just don't really do anything with it. So we hate to just waste that space. So we wanted to make this into some sort of outdoor area or garden area or something that we can just utilize a little bit more. The previous owners didn't have a lot going on back here other than this kind of gazebo looking thing and it was really um, wobbly and just had really seen better days so we wanted to take that down um, but there really isn't very much going on back here other than kind of a storage area for some extra pavers that little gazebo we have our AC unit back there um, and yeah it just gets really overgrown and like I said neglected back here on this side so we definitely want to spruce it up and um, make it look better. So that was the goal. So the first thing that we did, or well, Brandon kind of did, was took the mower and the weed eater and really cleared out all of that overgrown mess. And then we wanted to kind of do this the right way. So Brandon um, actually ran a sprinkler or drip system type thing um, running water so that we can have water in our garden and not have to worry about you know us watering if we're gone or you know things just getting watered in the garden regularly so that is a huge huge help in a garden so I am so thankful that he was able to do that and the next thing we had to do was build out these garden beds so I drew up kind of what I had in mind and then figured out the measurements um, depending on like our size and what we needed. We got all of the wood from Home Depot and I will make a very in-depth tutorial on these garden beds. So look for that in the next couple weeks. I just wanted to do a separate video for those um, because it is a little bit more lengthy. So I will definitely be doing a video on those. We built out the garden beds on that little patio surface that we have over there. And then we moved them into our little garden space just to make sure that everything was put together correctly. And these empty garden beds became quite the jungle gym for our little guys. But then the next step was to lay out this weed block and we just grabbed this from Home Depot and the purpose of this is to put this underneath your gravel or rock and it prevents the weeds from popping up and just makes things a little bit cleaner uh, and then to hold it in place we just staked it down so that it doesn't shift underneath the rock at all. Um, it's super easy to do. And I will link as much as I can for you guys below. Go ahead and leave me a comment if you have any questions at all, but I will link all of the products and everything that we used as much as I can in the description box below. So we definitely wanted to get all of this laid out and kind of put around the boxes and stuff before we put the gravel down. And what we did for the garden boxes is we just shifted them all to the side and then put the weed block down and then put the garden boxes right back on top of the weed block just so that we don't have weeds popping up in our garden beds. We definitely don't want that. These are the stakes that we used. You can find them on Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon even. Once uh, the black liner was down, it was almost time for the rock. And that was really fun because we got to go shopping and look around at all different types of rock. So before I show you guys the rock, I'm gonna jump back inside and show you a quick DIY that I made using my new Cricut Explore Air 2. If you guys are not familiar with Cricut and their smart cutting machines, these machines, you guys, are cutting edge. I was so impressed with all of the things that I can make. The possibilities are endless. And when you are very creative and love to make things, 
things, these definitely come in handy. I was able to make this little label for a seed container. I just typed out the words using their Cricut Design Space, which is also available on mobile, so you can really make anything from anywhere. It's pretty amazing. The Cricut can draw, cut, and score using the scoring stylus. And my favorite part of all is that you can totally use these to personalize your items or even gift them. Mother's Day is coming up, and I know my mom and my mother-in-law love those personalized gifts. Today I'm using the permanent vinyl in black and I'm just going to take my transfer tape and transfer this on to that little tin container just to give it a nice little label and add something cute to the front. Another thing I love so much about the Cricut Design Space is there are a ton of fonts and images and a lot of fun things to use in your projects. I envision myself making a ton of projects, especially for my kids, things for birthday parties and personalization. You guys also know how obsessed with organization and labeling I am, so I definitely plan on utilizing that fully. And the Cricut Explore Air 2 can cut over a hundred different materials, you guys. Anything from iron-on to paper to vinyl, specialty materials like glitter paper, cork, bonded fabric, you name it, it can cut it. It is pretty amazing. So I'm just going to take this transfer paper and now press that onto my tin container. Make sure that it is centered and looks good. Then I'm going to press this down and make sure that it adheres really well and gets all those little air bubbles. And then once you remove the transfer paper, everything should come off nice and easy. And if that is not the cutest little seed container, I don't know what else is. And what is so cool is that I made it. <laughs> These are some of the other materials I'm so excited to try. Aluminum, leather, I've already used the vinyl, cardstock, and even denim, you guys. Cricut also sent me their Easy Press 2, and I made the cutest shirt for my mom and my sisters, kind of an early little Mother's Day gift. We are all obsessed with coffee, so it was only fitting to make them but first coffee sweatshirts. So I am so excited to share this with you guys and a huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring this video. You can find the Explore Air 2 and other Cricut smart cutting machines and supplies at your local craft store or by visiting Cricut.com. And the next step for making over our backyard was picking out rock. So we kind of narrowed our choices down to the California gold or the salt and pepper gravel. And the salt and pepper was definitely more of a mix of some lighter and cooler colors. And then the California gold was a little bit more of like a warmer kind of browns and oranges. So our house colors can kind of go either way. And I wanted to incorporate that into our decision with the gravel. So I actually pulled you guys on Instagram. So we did actually end up going with the salt and pepper gravel. And it was pretty fun watching that be dumped into our driveway. Um, my boys definitely loved that and it gave them something to play on every time we were outside. Um, I used to do that all the time as a kid. I loved playing in the dirt piles and rock piles and whatever we had going on. It was a lot of fun. And of course, all of that rock had to go somewhere. So I worked on this for several days, just doing a little at a time. My youngest and I would go out in the mornings before it got too hot and take several loads of rock back and forth, back and forth. And it is hard work, <laughs> let me tell you. It is not easy at all, but it is definitely worth it. And I think my son had way too much fun in those wheelbarrow rides. He was definitely having the time of his life. And the reason why we wanted to put gravel back here was because it just makes things so much easier for cleanup and we're going to be doing so much watering and stuff back here. We just don't want the water to pile up or create mud and we just don't really want to deal with grass back here. So I thought that gravel would be the best option. 
So now moving on to address that gazebo. This was kind of an easy decision to make, but also a hard decision. Um, easy in the fact that it was wobbly and old, but hard in the decision that we were gonna have to take it down in the safest way possible. And these pergolas or gazebos are not easy to take apart at all. It's kind of a process. So we started by taking the roof down and apart first and then went with the outsides. I wanted to salvage as much wood as I could and try and do a potting table or a potting bench out of the reclaimed wood. This wood had so much character. So I kind of just started putting things together and getting an idea of some type of table that we could create and using a few new pieces but probably about 90% of the reclaimed wood, we were able to come up with a new design using reclaimed wood and a brand new to us a potting table for our garden. So this was really, really fun. I really, really enjoyed this process of kind of creating and designing. And the best part is it is mostly reclaimed wood and this is just a really, really fun piece. I did run out of wood on that little bottom shelf there, so next time I'm at the hardware store, I'll just grab an extra piece of wood and that finish off that little shelf down there on the bottom. And once the table was put together, I went in with an 80 grit sandpaper and kind of made this wood look a little new again. I did like the weathered look, but it was kind of splintering a little bit and with the kids kind of climbing all over it and you know us utilizing it a lot, I thought it would just be really nice to have it nice and smooth. So I believe this is a redwood and redwood usually does really well outside and outdoors. So I'm gonna give this a coat of poly and then finish that up. And then moving on to filling our garden beds, which is one of the most fun parts of it all. I picked this soil up from Home Depot and this was a Sunday morning and it was the most relaxing Sunday morning we have had in a really long time. This is definitely a memory that will go down in the books. And I'm so glad that we have the camera and we're able to capture this because this was a really fun morning for all of us to be able to fill our garden beds and plant everything. And the kids were just, just so excited and uh, so were we. So this was a really fun morning. So in this little outdoor garden space, we wanted to really utilize this extra space that we have to plant and grow our own food. My kids are really into fruits, not so much vegetables. However, I will try and incorporate those as I can, but we wanted to do a lot of fruit um, this time to start and we did some strawberries, we did some cantaloupe, watermelon, and even some tomatoes. I'm hoping that we can eventually start canning and making our own uh, tomato sauce and spaghetti sauce and those types of things. Eventually as our garden grows, I probably want to do some type of border right around the outside or along the fence line. Um, I wouldn't mind a citrus tree or two. We already have um, raspberry and blueberry bushes that are ready to go in um, somewhere near that fence line there. I eventually want to DIY a little trellis for our berry bushes and hopefully one day a little gate that we can kind of close off into our garden space. I did find the cutest copper hose pot and this is the cutest thing to conceal a watering hose. I absolutely love it. I will link it down below for you guys. And of course I have my little seed container that I made with my new Cricut and all of the gardening tools ready to go on our new reclaimed potting table. We've got gloves and pruning shears, watering cans, all of the supplies that I mentioned in my Target and Amazon haul earlier this week. So if you guys remember how this space started, it was an overgrown mess, very neglected and needed a lot of love. This space was definitely in need of an overhaul. And now this space is clean 
and organized. It looks so much bigger and it feels so much bigger without that big gazebo kind of breaking everything up. Everything has kind of grown in and been trimmed back and is really, really flourishing. So it looks so, so pretty. I love how this gravel really just simplifies and lets your eyes rest. There's not way too much going on, but the beds are just a nice warm touch with that wood. And once those garden beds really start taking off and things start growing up, it will just add so much color and life and greenery with all of that stuff growing. Our new slash reclaimed potting table was the perfect addition for that space. It was exactly what we needed and it matches our garden beds perfectly. So those pretty little hydrangea bushes I found at Home Depot. So I hope to dig out some of that rock and give them a really sweet place to settle right on that corner there and let them flourish and get big so we can have some really pretty hydrangea cuttings soon and no garden would be complete without a hummingbird feeder to welcome some little pollinators into our garden space. I love this little feeder. I found it on Amazon. I will link that below if you guys are interested, but it has that perfect little copper touch. I am still on the hunt for some outdoor seating or a little conversation set that I can add to this patio slab. Maybe a little umbrella or something just to kind of cozy up this space a little bit, but I cannot wait to get out here in the mornings and do some morning reading this summer, some quiet time. I am so excited to really just enjoy this space. It was long overdue. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helps or inspires you in some way. Thank you guys so much again for watching and we'll catch you next time.